Waka, 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 whoa. Look at what we're gonna be building today. I am so grateful to LEGO for sending us this set early so we can bring you guys an early look at this and give you our thoughts on what I think is gonna be a pretty epic build. We're gonna go ahead and get this bad boy unboxed. We're gonna give you some thoughts about some of the building techniques as we bring it to life. Then of course, show you the awesome features of it and give you our final thoughts. Let's get building. So in total, we've got 14 bags to work through, as well as a couple of separate pieces that we're gonna be grabbing as we go. I have to say, I have not seen this piece yet, so it's extremely fascinating. Already seeing some cool new pieces in the mix, and I'm definitely excited to see what other fun stuff we're gonna discover as we get building, so let's get started. Within the little instruction box, we found the sticker sheet, and there's honestly not too many. I definitely think we uh, could have ended up with a lot more stickers, so I'm glad there's only this one sheet. And then as you expect from the Lego instructions these days, there is lots of cool details on the inspiration, the story behind Pac-Man, some details of the designers, and then we get to dive right into the build, which we are going to do. And we are done with bags one and two, and we've got this awesome little display base to show for it. And it's got some really, really cool stuff going on. One of the craziest things that we uh, had happen through this was we actually had to put some pieces on temporarily to ensure that these guys would line up. And what's really impressive about this is you can make them spin, which is so cool. So you can either be chasing those ghosts down or be getting chased by them. It's super duper cool. It's a great little display piece, even just on its own, but we have lots more building to do. So let's get on to the arcade. So we've gotten a decent part of the actual cabinet structure done, but I think we're now sort of getting to one of the scariest parts, which is putting on these giant 8x16 stickers. Let's hope we can do this without mistake. All right, not too bad. I do think one of them's a little bit crooked, but, but luckily I think because of the yellow, you really don't see a lot of the, I don't know, sort of the defects or it blends really, really well with the edge of the, the pieces. Um, and I think they're sort of both offset oppositely. So since they're gonna be on opposite sides anyways, kind of works out, but we did all right. We did all right. They're not crazy crooked and that's what's important. So let's keep building. Bag seven is where things got pretty wild. I don't know if I've ever used so many red Technic pins in a build, but I have to admit that how it all came together was really, really impressive. And we discovered this amazing new piece, which is like a tread link, but it has a little bar attached to it so you can have something going around the tread link moving with it. If there's one negative thing I think I would say about this experience so far, it's that I am terrified of ever having to take this set apart. So look at this, we're building this little like six long assembly in Technic, right? And then we are shoving all of these rods down into Technic pins. Um, and I don't know about you, I would not want to have to poke out all of these bars. You can see there's lots of solid places where they've gone through so far. So this would be a total nightmare to take apart. So uh, you better know you're gonna love this when you build it because it's never coming apart again. Though admittedly, I think that's likely to be the case. And then I didn't think it could get any worse. And the, look at the step that comes up here. 64 times you need to build these little assemblies and stick them in place. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess beauty does come at a price sometimes. <laughs> and that the last of those beautiful blue and black tiles they just really really pop for whatever reason and honestly i think with how beautiful it looks now i've kind of totally forgotten about the nightmare of doing all of the dots um and yeah i'm definitely just stoked to see how the movement comes together so let's get to it before we attach the main game screen i gotta show off how the functionality works it's just a couple of simple gears really you've got a couple of gears at 90 degrees to each other, and then one little piston arm, and just by a single rotation, all the different parts of the board move on the opposite side, which is incredible. And then even the way this gets attached, there are some very specifically located bars in the build, and we're simply gonna be clipping this whole thing into it to get it attached, which is so, so, so impressive. And somehow, at the same time, the gear actually lines up correctly as we do that, which is just some sort of wizardry. I tell you, friends, I tell you. We're gonna go like this, like this, like that, and like that, boom. 
and then I can already feel that the gear is engaged. So I'm gonna let you see how it works when we get this bad boy done, which we're gonna do now. And our Pac-Man Arcade is complete. This set really sets a high score from the beautifully printed tiles for the main sign of the game to all of the great details shown on sort of the screen of the build. Um, you've of course got lots of great details in the joysticks, the coin slot. You've got lots of great details on the side. It's just very clean. The shape's really nice. It looks like an arcade. And of course you come to the top where you've got the beautiful brick built Pac-Man and Ghost Friends. And then you work your way down over to the awesome little mini build, which was totally not necessary, but definitely just helps bring more of that nostalgia so you can feel like you're hanging out in an arcade. This build is just jam packed with features like the ability to take the little top scene off and remove the back of the cabinet so you can actually get in there, see all of the amazing inner workings of the functionality. And of course, if you want to, put your little scene um, away in case you want to store it in there while you're moving the cabinet around. Um, and of course that closes back up and ensures no light gets through to the back of the functional area. Then you come around the front of the build. You can of course spin the characters in that awesome top little build, which is super duper fun. You've got the awesome little coin light as well, which looks really, really great. Definitely just makes you want to pop a quarter in to get a game going. Um, you can of course grab the joystick which it feels just like it would if you were actually be able to play the game. And then you've got the amazing crank wheel on the side, which moves Pac-Man and a bunch of the ghosts around the map. You even have the little orange ghost trapped in the middle, bouncing back and forth, the cherry wiggling around. It's so, so cool just watching the characters spin on screen and absolutely amazing that they could figure out a way to build it. And you've even got an adjustable scoreboard so you can compete with your friends and family to see who will get the highest score. For things that I didn't like about this build, I would say there are three main ones. The first being that I did not enjoy doing 64 of those little dots. They're very, very difficult to build and will be nearly impossible to take apart ever again. But I do understand that that might have been the best solution for visual purposes. So sometimes art requires very difficult things. My second complaint would be that there was no one by one round tile with a blue version of the ghost, the ones that Pac-Man can actually eat. I think it would have been really, really cool to have one of those. That way you can maybe change the actual board to have Pac-Man chasing the ghost down rather than being chased. But what can you do? Finally, my third complaint would be that unfortunately the actual little arcade scene has nothing but stickers for the actual arcade machine. I would have loved to see a few printed pieces in there, especially the one of the actual game screen. It's really, really too bad they didn't go for a printed part on that one. But I do want to give credit um, that the torso on the minifigure is absolutely phenomenal. And that's it. I do want to say all in all, I think this is a pretty darn fantastic set. I know it's a little bit on the pricier side for sure, but I think it comes in at a good size. It's really fun to build. The functionality of it is definitely like amazing. And I think anyone that you show this build to will be absolutely in love, especially if they love Pac-Man. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about it. Otherwise, uh, thanks so much for watching and happy building out there.